is amazing things can happen if you go into a subway in New York. I mean the restaurant, not the thing under the ground. This was, uh, I don't know, my wife was away somewhere, and uh, I, I, went at, I went to the subway on the corner of Columbus and 82nd, and we started chatting, and, uh, and here I am. <laughs> I, I made no connection between this letter, which I signed, but never thought about again, and the organization, and I'm delighted that things like this happened. <clears throat> and it, being here brings back so many memories, and so many friends. Mark Ginsburg was such a great ambassador to Morocco for the Clinton administration, and Carol Bellamy, who served at the UN, and in the Clinton administration with such distinction, and old PCVs that uh, were with me in Morocco in 70 to 72, and breaking the fast, although I cheated a little tonight, uh, with the Herrera soup. When I was in Morocco, I thought I would learn a little bit about Moroccan culture by doing the Ramadan for a few days. But I want to be sure you understand this was in July tougher and we'd sit there we'd sit there and wait for the cannon to go off and plunge into that soup and I know all of you know know what that's like but I can't pretend I did it for more than a few days um, let me just say two things first about the country secondly about the Peace Corps uh, it is true that we all love Morocco it's hard to live in Morocco as you all did and not love Morocco. And my hat's off to you for continuing to keep all of you tied together through that common experience to a country that's so uniquely interesting in so many ways. I'm not going to tell you about Morocco. You, you all know more about it than I do. And I've only been back a few times in the decades since I left there. <clears throat> but. It was the best job I ever had in my life. Uh, having a Jeep, traveling around the country, 200 volunteers scattered from Agadir to Ujda, and, uh, and, and seeing this extraordinary country. And when I did go back, to my amazement, some people still kind of remembered. And uh, it was an extraordinary experience. Those were difficult years for Morocco. <clears throat> there were several coup attempts. One was very bloody, the King's Birthday Party in 1971, where about 70 people were killed in the middle of the party, including a couple of ambassadors. The American ambassador had, took the body of the Belgian ambassador back into Rabat with him in the, uh, his car. The uh, other coup attempt, which took place with General Oufkir, uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with those incidents. But the country held together at a critical point and has turned out to be uh, a developing country with some difficulties, but still retaining this unique charm. For me, the memories of Morocco are inexorably connected to those of the Peace Corps itself. And while we're, and, and I think that for you, for all of you, to continue to do things for the country long after you've left uh, shows several things, but more about America and you all than about Morocco. Uh, to me, this is what the Peace Corps and this is what the United States is all about. And this is, I'm sure, if President Kennedy and his brother Bobby were alive today, uh, they could see this, they would say, well, you know, we really did launch something that mattered. Um, there's always been a big dispute about whether the Peace Corps makes a difference in the countries the volunteers are sent to. My mantra to the volunteers during training, uh, we trained in those days in Red Rocks in Colorado, and Saint, uh, because it looked like Morocco, which it didn't really, <laughs> But uh, it was an old uh, Nazi POW camp, actually. And no, I'm serious. There were, they took Nazi prisoners there, and there were still swastikas carved in the, in the wall. And, uh, but then we, we moved the training to Morocco. 
And I used as my mantra the Rolling Stone song, you can't always get you what you want, but you may just find in time you get what you need. And I stressed to the volunteers that if they thought in two years they were going to change the world, because the advertising in those days was much more couched to join the Peace Corps, change the world. If you thought you were going to change the world, you better stay home because you weren't going to change the world. You weren't going to change Morocco. You weren't going to change the, wherever you were assigned. But you would do a little bit of good, and it would be an incredible experience for you as individuals. Um, today, one of, the, one of the returned Peace Corps volunteers is running for president. Uh, Chris Dodd, and um, as he will always tell you, it was a seminal experience in his life. And uh, what the Peace, Corps, the Peace Corps' greatest beneficiary, without doubt, has been the United States. It's become a cliche, but I think it was pretty clear already a, de uh, a decade after its founding, although in those days people really didn't understand it. So. I, I'm just thrilled to see the spirit of the Peace Corps living on, not just as something in, in, that you've internalized, but in an organization which has identified absolutely critical problems. Uh, so it looks to me like the Peace Corps succeeded in changing your lives as individuals, or you wouldn't be here, in strengthening our country with an understanding which uh, is lacking in certain places. But uh, uh, I think that the Peace Corps idea, if properly understood, is, is fantastic. And um, all of you know that. It's changed your lives. It changed my life. I've had a lot of interesting jobs since then. But as I said a minute ago, this was the best job I ever had. And, um, and I just can't tell you how pleased I am that I stopped into that Subway restaurant on Columbus in 81st a few months ago. Thank you all. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs>